Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Buying a Home in Groningen. So let's get started. A little introduction to myself. So I am Rafaela. I am expat buying manager specialized in Groningen in the north of the Netherlands. I am from Brazil. I was born and raised there, uh, but I moved away from Brazil in 2008. Since then, I have lived in Austria, England, and the Netherlands as well. Uh, in Groningen itself, I have lived here in total of 10 years, so I know the, the city quite well. I am a proud mom of two daughters, and just for your understanding, I bought my house uh, here in Groningen uh, six years ago. I sold it and I bought another one. So I know what you're going through at this moment. And I know that the process can be challenging when you, you are an expat in the Netherlands. So a little bit of our content today, you're gonna have, have a little introduction. We'll go through some market info and some market drivers as well. Uh, we'll go through what you need from savings for the whole process and three tips to win in the current market. Of course, we're going through the timeline at the end of the presentation as well. Greatness is achieved in the agents of others. And what do you mean by that? That is that we can deliver a, a good service if work as a team. So here is our, our EHN, EHN team, uh, the buying team. We have also the rental team, but here is the buying team. So we have uh, myself, I already presented myself. I am Brazilian, I speak Portuguese, English, and Spanish. Klein Beach and Netherlands, <laughs> I'm working on that. We also have Giovanna, she's also Brazilian. She speaks English, Portuguese, Spanish, and Dutch. Uh, she's sitting in Eindhoven and she specializes in that area. We also have Ludo, he is joining us today, today here in the webinar. He is Dutch, uh, but he lived abroad. He lived in America for a while, so he speaks English and Dutch. Ludo is sitting in Amsterdam, and he specializes in that area as well. He's joining our webinar today, so uh, he's going to support us with the chat and Q&A. If you have any questions, please pop in the Q&A or the chat. He will answer it during the presentation. If there is any questions left at the end of the webinar, we can go through them together. We also have Ellen working with us. She's also sitting in Amsterdam. She has lived in Asia for a while. She speaks English, Dutch. Uh, also a little bit of Japanese and Thai. She helps us with uh, the documentation, the client's documentation, the property review, the research. So she helped us with that. We also have Rick. He, Rick is also from the Netherlands. He has lived in Colombia, South Africa. So he speaks Spanish, uh, Dutch, of course, and English as well. Rick is sitting in Amsterdam at the moment and he specialized, he specialized in that area. So a little brief introduction to our company. We are no traditional real estate agents, what we mean by that is that we help with buying and renting, not selling yet. We have though a sister company, uh, ELN, and it helps with letting if in the future if you need some help with that. We charge a percentage of the appraisal value. We think this is the fairest way to for our clients because we have no influence on that amount. We, we need a, an expert, uh, to provide the official valuation amount of the property. So our fee is based on that. And of course, we know what it's like to settle in a new country. We are all either expats or we have been expats ourselves in the past. So we are know what you're going through. What's our added value? So selling agents take offers from our comp company more seriously. And that's because we uh, build some network. We are more than seven years in the market uh, and we know quite a lot of people. So they know uh, that we did our homework, that you, you know your finances make sense uh, and they can take our offers more seriously. We can sometimes book viewings when it's no longer possible, again, because of our network and also because some selling agents, uh, they save some spots uh, for uh, 
clients that are working with buying agents as well. So sometimes you call, it's fully booked, but if you try ourselves, uh, they can have a high spot available for you. We support by reviewing Dutch legal and property documents. That's very important. So, uh, always that you go to view a property review, you receive some documents from the selling agents. We review those documents to check if there is any red flags or anything you should be aware of, and we share that with you. We help define market value through market data. We basically use the same method that the appraisers do. So we use the comparable uh, method. Uh, we check similar properties that were sold uh, recently. We we'll use a lot of criteria for that. So we can give you an estimation of the market value before you send an offer. And of course, we will inform you about rules and regulations that apply to your specific case as well. We make sure you don't make the same as we made so you don't need to worry about that. So here we have some market info. So here are some numbers uh, from the average selling price in the Netherlands from uh, the last year. Uh, you can see that average price in 2022 was 429,000. That's the average for the whole Netherlands. Uh, if you see in the fourth quarter, the average price was 407,000. So it, it, it was uh, lower than the average of the whole year. It is because of the, the market. If you see the, the last month of 2022, the market started to slow down a little bit. That's the reason you see this difference in this number. The average price for the new build is a little bit higher. It was 498,000 for the fourth quarter of 2022. If you see uh, here in this graph, uh, since 2005 until uh, 2022, the prices increased quite a lot. Uh, and most of the time, the price were increasing. You can only see from 2008 to until 2013, the prices decreased a little bit because we had a crisis during that time. But after that, you can see, especially in the past years from 2018 until 2022, the prices increased quite, quite sharply. But if you kept going this graph, I would say now it would be more towards <clears throat> stabilizing, not going up at the moment. Here we have some uh, market figures from Groningen specifically. It is information for, from the fourth quarter of 2022 for the existing properties. So we had 873 houses sold. Uh, we, has, we have uh, 766 houses for sale. It is important for you to take a look there that is a uh, plus 143% if compared with the, the past year. So it is a lot more. And it's the same uh, reason that I mentioned before. It is because the market is slowing down a little bit. Uh, the average pur pri purchase price is 317,000. It was uh, still a little bit higher than the previous year. It was 6.5% if compared with the same time in 2021. But if you compare the fourth quarter with the third quarter, you can see a little decrease of 3.9%. Uh, the same thing happened to the average pr uh, price per square meter. Is, it was 2,982. Uh, and if you compare with the previous year or the previous quarter, we had a little bit of a drop in this amount as well. The sales time though, is, it stays 26 days. So it didn't drop that much. The market's still uh, quite quick and we need to eat, uh, act fast because of that as well. Let's go through some market drivers. So we have two different scenarios here. First, uh, we'll go through what caused the price to increase in the past, and then we can go through what the current uh, market looks like as well. So what caused the price to increase? We have uh, the fiscal benefits. We have the tax exemption. So uh, what's the tax exemption? If you buy a property up to 440K and you're up to 35 years old, you, know, you don't need to pay transfer tax. 
So that's some that's a benefit that most of people that are entitled to. They're looking forward uh, to make use of it. So uh, the people look for to buy houses because of that reason and makes the prices to increase, of course. We also have the interest rebate. What does that mean? It means that the interest paid is tax deductible. So you're going to receive some money back in the future when you have your tax declared. There is no capital gains. So if you buy a property and later you decide to sell it, either to buy another property or you need to, to move from the country, for example, uh, you don't need to pay taxes on these gains. We also have the tax-free parent donation. It applies for <coughs> parents that are uh, Dutch citizens. Uh, in the past, if they donate up to 100,000 euros, it wouldn't uh, be uh, taxed. For this current year, it reduced is 30,000 euros. And for next year, it will be ending. But of course, it made uh, the people that also were entitled to these benefits as well to want to make use of it and to buy the property uh, because of that reason. We had uh, the low interest rates. We saw uh, in the beginning of uh, last year, it was extremely low. It went a little bit higher uh, uh, up to now. But yeah, if you compare with the, the previous years, or even if you compare to the other countries, it is still quite low as well. We have also the, the high rents. Uh, the, the rents are expected still to increase. We don't expect a decrease on, on, on this sense. So the people prefer generally to buy and pay for their own mortgage, uh, instead of paying for someone else's uh, mortgage with their rental. And I think this is the one that played the role the most, is the lack of supply. So in the Netherlands, we still are short of around 300,000 uh, properties. So it is a, a, a simple rule in the market. If we have more people looking for houses, then we have houses available. Of course, the prices will go up. So the current market, uh, as mentioned before, we see that the market it is, is slowing down a little bit. Some places it is uh, dropping. We don't expect a big drop. So if you go for the forecast from the banks, we are expecting the prices uh, to drop a little bit this year uh, for around 6% and next year a little bit as well. But if you look for the bigger cities, if you look for uh, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Meinhoven, uh, Maastricht, Groningen, we don't uh, really expect a big drop on the prices. But of course, we can see that the market is slower indeed. And uh, the, the reasons for that is the increase of the interest rate. As mentioned before, they are still quite uh, low if compared with other countries or a few years ago. But what happens, a lot of people, uh, they compare the, the interest rates that were in the beginning of last year, it was 1.3, 1.5% with the current interest rate. So they hope that the interest rates will go down again. We don't think that's gonna happen, happen in the near future, but yet some people prefer to stay on hold because of that reason. Uh, at the moment, we can see 80% more active listings. Uh, that's what uh, the reason for that is because the properties are staying longer in the market before they sell it. And uh, we still have the same amount of prop the new builds uh, uh, for sale. So you can see more active listings so you can have uh, more properties to choose from. We have less overbidding. I think the main reason for that is because the asking price, it is more similar to the market value. If you see in the past, the asking price generally was lower and you compare the asking price to the purchase price, you saw a big overbidding. At the moment, the strategy of the selling part uh, changed a little bit. So you can see the asking price uh, more similar to the market value. So the overbidding is less because of that reason as well. We still have a lack of supply uh, because of the new builds that were planned to happen last year, this year. Uh, they are a little bit delayed because of the high material costs, because of the, the war and everything that's going on in the world. 
So we still are, uh, we have lack of supply on this sense. We have more people looking to buy than properties to sell. Here's some uh, rules and regulations that apply that's interesting for you to know. So we have the self-occupancy obligation. It started around one year ago, a little bit less than that. So if you're buying a property in Groningen um, and you intend to rent it, you have to, to buy a property above 305,500. Otherwise you cannot rent it out. So if your intention is to buy uh, to rent, uh, please uh, take a look at this uh, rule. Uh, the reason for this uh, new policy in the Netherlands is to make it easier for the, the people that are gonna live in the property uh, to buy, uh, because we had a lot of investors in the past and the government is trying to make it more difficult for the investors and make it easier for the people that are gonna buy to live in the property. Uh, last year, I also started to have, uh, to have this rule regarding the smoke detector. So it is mandatory to have smoke detectors in every level of your property. If you don't have it, uh, you are, are liable and you can have some penalty as well. We have the rising uh, interest rates <laughs> that was mentioned before. Uh, we had it, the, this increase during the last year. At the moment, it is around 4.5% and we expect that's gonna stabilize. Uh, this increase made the, 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 how can I say that? Make up, made a pressure in the market to uh, downwards the price of the properties because of that reason. What would you need in savings before we start? We can go through this one together. It is important for you to know that you can borrow from the bank 100% of the market value. Uh, for the closing fees, you cannot have that included in your mortgage, so you would need that from your savings. So in general rules, if you are uh, above 35 or buy a property above 440K, you need to pay a transfer tax uh, and that is gonna be 2% uh, of the purchase price. Uh, if you're under 35 or bu and buy a property up to 440K, then you don't need to pay these taxes. Uh, if you, when you're having your transfer, you need to have it done by a notary. For the notary, you have to pay the mortgage, deed, the mortgage deed and the transfer deed. Here we have between 700 and 1300. I have to say that here in Groningen, it's a little bit lower than that. So you can expect around uh, 600 for mortgage deed and 600 for the transfer deed as well. It is important for you to, to notice that everything that's mortgage related is tax deductible, so you can have uh, some money back in the future. So for the mortgage deed done at the, the notary, you can have some money back later on. You also are gonna need to pay your bank or your mortgage broker. For that, you would need to pay between uh, 1,500 and 3,500 euros. This is also tax deductible. Uh, our uh, company fee, it is, we have two different packages. I'm gonna uh, show you later on, but it is between 0.75% and 1% uh, of the appraiser value. But you can go through the, the different packages at the end of the presentation. If you're having a mortgage, it is mandatory to have a valuation report provided by an appraiser. So you need an appraiser going to the property and that's gonna cost you between 700 and 900 euros. It is also tax deductible. Uh, you can choose to have a technical inspection uh, done at the property. For that, they charge around 465 euros. If you're not fluent in Dutch, it is mandatory to have an interpreter together with you at the notary, and they charge you around 290 euros Again, here in Kroningen is a little bit less than that, but yeah, you can count on that amount. Uh, in one stage of the, the process, you need to provide the seller with either a 10% of the purchase price deposit 
or a 10% bank guarantee. So if you choose to have the, the bank guarantee instead of the deposit, you need to pay, to pay a, a fee for that, and that would cost you around 250 euros. The last thing in this list is NHG. So it's the National Mortgage Guarantee. And what's that? The National Mortgage Guarantee, uh, if you buy a property up to 405,000 uh, euros, uh, you can make use of this benefit. They provide you with best interest rates and also an extra insurance. So if for some reason you cannot pay your mortgage because something happened, you lost your job or something else, uh, they can, uh, you're covered by this insurance, I would say. So everyone that's entitled to, we advise to make use of it because it's really worth it. And for this, you have to pay us a fee of 0.6% of the mortgage amount. And this is also tax deductible. Here are three tips to win in the current market. First, we have value, value, value. I can explain this to you with an example. So here is one property that is it, it is in the market for 395. Uh, it's also uh, nice for you to understand that the asking price is something that the selling agent decides. There is not a rule for it, so they can put either higher in market, uh, market value or lower. It, it depends on their strategy. So it is very important for you to know the market value before you send an offer. Here is this property that is it, in the, it is in the market for 395, but we do our research and then we figure out that the market value is actually 415,000. Uh, because it is uh, a nice property, it is a little bit competitive, you decided that it is important to overbid a little bit. So the purchase price is 435,000. If you compare the asking price with the purchase price, you're gonna see a difference of 10%. But if you compare and you're gonna think that you overbid 10%, but when in reality, the most important thing is for you to compare the market value with the purchase price. So here you see that you uh, in fact paid 4.8% uh, uh, of overbid, not 10 as you saw before. Here is another, Examples. Sorry, came backwards. There you go. So here is for the same property, but for for instance, this selling agent decided to put the asking price lower to attract more people to build the property, or for any other reason, they put the asking price 375. It is the same property, so the market value is the same, is 415,000, and the purchase price is again the same, 435. If you compare the asking price with the purchase price, you're going to think that you overbid 16%, when in reality, it is the same. We, you paid only 4.8% of overbid. So it is very important for you to find the market value uh, because based on the market value, you can have your mortgage. You can have 100% of the market value if your mortgage cap allows, of course. Here is something that you start seeing in the market uh, currently. Uh, so the asking price of this property is above the, the market value. So for this one is 450. Let's see how that would work. So the asking price is 450. The market value is lower, it's 425. And the purchase price is 450. So if you compare the asking price with the purchase price, you think you're even, but if you depend on 100% of your mortgage, it is important for you to not overbid the market value because otherwise you have to pay a difference of 25,000 to cover this difference. So it is very, very important to find the market value before. Here it's another example of the asking price being higher than the market value. The asking price was 450 again, the market value of 425, but because we did our research, you offer uh, the same as the market value, so 425. You think that you pay less 
than the asking price. So you pay less than it worth it, but actually you just pay the, the market value. So that's the right amount. You can borrow 100% of that amount. Good, so let's move on. A winning offer. Let's see how a winning offer looks like. So submitting a winning offer. Offer a good price, not always the highest price. So we come back to the example that we did before. Uh, sometimes you, you need 100% of the, the, per, the, sorry, let me start again. Uh, sometimes you need 100% from mortgage, so you cannot offer more than you can uh, borrow, right? So if you see the property in the beginning of the, the example, this was 395,000 and you offer uh, 430, but the, the, the market value is 450. Uh, you put in the offer that you need 100% from your mortgage. The selling agents, they know that the market value is 415. So that they know that the, the process will, the deal will not go through because you offer more than you're capable from borrow. So it is important for you to understand your mortgage cap and uh, send your offer according to it. Offer security to the seller. What do we mean by that? Um, if you're having a mortgage, uh, it is nice for you and the, the mortgage advisors can do that for you to ask them to send you a letter and then you can add that to your offer to give security to the seller that you would be able to borrow the amount that you mentioned in the offer as well. Offer the least amount of hassles. So we always try to make it easier for the seller because if they have two similar um, offers, they will go for the one that's easier for them. So for example, if they want to have a transfer in six months, but you want to have a transfer done in three months, uh, try to make it work for them because it will increase your chances of winning uh, the bid. Another thing that you can do uh, in this sense, sometimes the sellers, they want to leave some furniture behind, even though you don't, you're not interested in this furniture try to negotiate, be flexible, and maybe take some furniture just to make it easier for them. I think that can help uh, your offer. And offer a personal touch. It's always nice if you can add to your offer a little letter explaining who you are, why you like their property, um, so it can uh, add some value to your offer as well. Due diligence. So we have two experts that go to the property after you send an offer. We have the technical inspector. The technical inspector is the expert that goes to the property to check the conditions of it. They will provide you with a report with what works needs to be done within a year and what work needs to be done between three to five years and later on and how much that would cost you. So it's always nice to have this expert going to the property, especially if you're buying an older property. So you have a forecast what you're going to need to invest in the property in the future. We also have the appraiser. This is mandatory when you have a mortgage. This is the professional that is going to give the official, value, the official valuation report and the bank, uh, the, the mortgage provider needs this report. They're going to the property and they will let you know what's the market value of it. So we do it right after the offer is accepted. Uh, and we try to do it as soon as the offer is accepted. And the main reason for that is because we want to have the report either before we sign the purchase agreement or before the cooling off, uh, the end of the cooling off period. So we have these reports and you can decide if you're moving on with the deal or not. Here we have the timeline. timeline. It is starts with the search. We always say that Funda is the best place for you to look for uh, properties. You can find more than 95% of the properties are there. So after you start uh, with the search, you view the property, we do the research for you, review that together with you. We submit the offer, do the negotiate, negotiation with the selling agent. After the offer is accepted, 
we book the appraiser and the technical inspector to go to the property. Around one week to 10 days after the offer is approved, we, you sign the purchase agreement. We reviewed that uh, before. We explained to you everything that it is in the contract before you sign it. You can start the mortgage application right after that. We have the cooling off period of three days. Uh, what does that mean? You have until this time to pull out of the deal without any penalties. After these days, after signing the purchase agreement, if you decide to cancel the deal, you need to pay a penalty of 10% of the purchase price. We have here an average of four weeks for your mortgage to be approved. It can be a little bit less or a little bit more, uh, but your mortgage advisor or your bank will let you know before you send the offer. After your mortgage application is approved, you enter to the final stage of the process. So around 10 days before the transfer, you're gonna receive the statement of completion. It is the, basically the final invoice where you have all the clo closing fees there and you have to pay this invoice before the transfer. On the day of the transfer, you're gonna have the last inspection. It is when you go to the property to check if it is in the same condition as it was before. Right after you go into the property, you go to the notary to sign the transfer deed and the mortgage deed if that's the case. And you also have the key handover done in the same day. After that, the house is yours. And we put here an end of liability term of two months, but we always advise you as soon as you move into the property, use the property in full to check if there is any damage or anything that's not working properly and you are not aware of you can claim liability from the seller. Here are our packages. Uh, we offer the smart and the complete package. Uh, for the smart, you have uh, an intake, of course. You have one person of contact, even though we work as a team on your file, you have one buy manager uh, working with you. Uh, we do the research, so it's the property review, uh, the price research as well. We submit the offer for you, do negotiation with the selling agent as well. We review the contract, we book the third parties, and we give you the pre-transfer support. And for that, we charge 0.75% of the appraisal value. We do uh, all this guidance on the smart package. It is online, but we are going to be uh, there every step of the way. Uh, for the complete package, the main difference is that you're going to be physically there with you. We can schedule these viewings for you as well. We're going to attend the viewings and attend the third parties meetings as well and give you the transfer support. For this one, we charge 1% of the appraisal value. We also have a package for the new builds. It is a completely different process. So if you're interested in this package, I would advise you to either watch uh, one webinar, we have it in YouTube, you can take a look there, or you can sign up for a future webinar that you're gonna have, or you can also schedule intake with one of us, so we can go through this property, uh, so through this process with you as well. If you have any questions, please let us know. If you're interested in booking an intake with one of us, we would be more than happy to talk to you and discuss your, um, your own situation. So please feel free to book a time with one of us. Thank you again for joining us in this webinar today. It was a pleasure and I hope you enjoy this beautiful sunny day. Bye-bye guys. Have a good day.